Well, welcome to the Onyx Backcountry Snow 101 Masterclass. Um, today, we're going to be going over um, some basics of the app, um, as well as um, how to plan a tour. Um, and with us today, we have Griffin Post, so I'm excited to dive into it. And um, let's get going. Um, so we'll start with introductions. I'm Matt Madick. Um, I am a marketing manager on the Backcountry team here at Onyx. Um, I started snowboarding when I was very young um, at a little mountain in Pennsylvania, and um, it's kind of driven this pursuit in me to go after bigger and better mountains and see where my snowboard can take me. Um, and that's led me here to Colorado. Um, I live, currently live in Carbondale, um, and I love getting out on the split board and the snowboard and um, seeing where it can take me. Yeah, I'm Griffin Post. I've been an Onyx athlete for the last couple of years, professional skier for 14 years, I think. And that photo of me is, I look cold because I am very cold. That was uh, on this expedition in the Yukon in April or May. I think that was one of the more, the coldest winter camping nights I've ever had. Um, but yeah, I've spent the last 14 or so years trying to explore different corners of the globe and Recently, Onyx has played a really big part of that and stoked to take you guys through kind of the essentials of ski touring and, you know, what I, how I plan a tour. Yeah, before we get too into it, um, Griffin and I, although how much we like skiing and backcountry skiing, um, we are not area guides and avalanche professionals. Um, this is not a substitute for an avalanche class. Uh, please go get educated um, and take a class before you go into the backcountry. Um, so what's on the docket for today? Um, first, we're going to go over Griff's amazing discovery um, with the, Wash, the Washburn discovery. Um, we're also going to go through um, the, what do you can experience for the first time in your app or um, kind of just orienting um, what, are, what all the buttons do, um, if it's been a while since you've been in the app, um, or if it's your first time altogether. Um, we're going to go over snow mode, a handful of the tools, as well as sharing and discovery. Um, and then Griffin's going to walk us through how to use the web map, which is using the app on a desktop computer and how to plan a tour. And then we're going to get into a giveaway and we'll have a little Q&A at the end of the uh, class as well. So Griffin, you've been in the news quite a bit lately um, with this incredible discovery. Um, so I'd love to like hear a little bit more about what this discovery was, um, what led you to want to do it and um, how Onyx Backcountry helped you find the cash. Yeah, so I've spent the last 18 months or so pretty obsessed with this expedition from 1937, where two pretty famous mountaineers and photographers went into the St. Elias range of the Yukon. They climbed Mount Lucania and basically hiked down into the flatlands of the Yukon. But in the process, their plans kind of changed. And so they ditched a bunch of camera gear and other supplies on this glacier, and they had fully planned to go back to get them, but they never returned and i read this i think two years ago and it all, that part always stuck with me about there was this gear cache with these cameras with film maybe in them still and they've just been sitting out on this glacier and i was like well i wonder if it's possible to find find it and locate it and in august we were able to do that and initially i was going back through photos today i think it was in october of last year I, the first step was like trying to figure out where they were originally camped. And that's where, you know, Onyx came in with this search. And if you want to bump to the next slide, it was kind of figuring out their exact location. And I had this one image on the left of where they were camped. And I was like, all right, if I can line that up and get a GPS point, maybe I can give that to some scientists and they can, Kind of project where this cache would have moved over the last 85 years and so you know taking this photo on the left and another photo of them with the cache on the right i basically had an x and y coordinates of where they're camped and i sent it to these glaciologists at the university of ottawa and they you know understanding glaciers way better than i do we're able to kind of project how far the cache had moved over the last 85 years and give us like a rough idea of where the cache might be. And like that, that treasure map was, as I like posted on Instagram today, it was like that, that made this whole project feel real. And that was such a pivotal point of like, like, okay, maybe this is possible. Like it's still pretty long odds, but being able to like 
see the, see where the cash had possibly moved made gave me so much more confidence and it was all because of like these two side by side photos i remember when i first kind of zoomed into that ground level i was like whoa that's that's where they camp like this all lines up and all right let's go it's unbelievable i mean i can only imagine your feeling when you uh when you started uncovering the cache and finding everything out in the field after spending so much time looking for it planning for it and you know investigating your treasure maps trying to see where everything went it was full like just disbelief because as confident as you are going into it you like fly into this valley and see how big it is and you're like there's there's no way there's so many crevasses and intricacies to the glacier but uh yeah it was a pretty special moment for sure when we found it and um i'm sure people will, might wonder what's happening to the film and currently it's in a lab in ottawa and uh cautiously optimistic we'll be able to like salvage something from the cameras that'd be so awesome we could see some more footage from back then and you know even what has shifted on the glacier over the last uh 80 plus years yeah absolutely it'd be pretty special to be able to bring that to life 85 years later it's wild <laughs> um okay so um now we're kind of getting into it here um if you have um if you have not signed up for onyx backcountry yet um or if you need a, a you know an extension here um we have a 30 percent off discount going on right now if you scan this qr code or visit the link um, here and i think they'll be popping that into the chat as well um it's a great opportunity to get a discount on our product um, and get ready for the winter um, and then from here, um, I'm going to go through right now and start showing um, the features of the app, as well as how to get yourself situated um, if you haven't booted up the app before. So one second as I click my screen share over to my phone here. All right, Griff, can you see my screen? Yep. Awesome. All right. So this is the Onyx Backcountry app. Um, and yeah, if you if you boot up for the first time, you might be a little overwhelmed with what some of these buttons do, um, what the lines mean, et cetera. So I'm going to go around the app kind of clockwise um, and show you what everything does. So if you look in the top right corner of the screen, there's this magnifying glass button. And if you click this, this is a really good place to start your adventure. Um, so if you know, hey, I'm going to go to Moab and going to go for a hike, um, et cetera, you can, you can search for anything here. If you're like, I want to go up on Loveland Pass or I'm going to go to Grand Teton National Park. This is a really good place to start because you start you search in here and it'll start showing you different things like trails, um, towns, campsites, like all sorts of things can be found within the search bar. And when you click it, it'll bring you right to where you need to be. Um, the next thing, um, it's just a little bit further down is the weather widget. And this will actually pull in the closest weather station um, to where you are. And it'll tell you things like your current, um, your current temperature um, as well as uh, your sunrise or sunset times, um, as well as like an extended forecast and even like the moon phases as you go through here. Moving further down the page, um, this is where you'll select between the different map types. So um, if you toggle this button right here, you'll be able to select between satellite, hybrid, and topo. Um, and you can see either, you know, satellite imagery, topo with the lines, get a little closer. Um, or hybrid, which is like a satellite image with those lines um, placed across them. And if you'd like to see the world in 3D, you can also do that here. If you click um, in the bottom right over here, you can toggle it into 3D mode and that'll enable you to um, see the world in three dimensions. Um, so as you get closer to these, you can see more of the mountain peaks. You kind of tilt pan and evaluate them. Um, and get a real visual as to what you're looking for in the mobile app. And I'll go back into 2D mode. Yeah, and if you ever get lost, um, a really good place to look is um, this. Uh, well, sorry, it froze up there for a sec. Um, you hit this crosshair section right here, and it'll actually show your current location on the map. Um, and then if you double click it, it'll show you um, where you're currently facing. Um, so that's really handy when you're in the field. Um, some of the other features in here are the tracker. So if you turn this on, it'll actually it'll uh, start drawing a line behind you um, and it'll um, enable you to 
like draw a line. It'll show your distance, the total time that you've been out in the field, as well as your speed. Um, right here to the right of it is the tools. So once you, yeah, so tools, um, this will have a handful of different tools that you can use to help customize your maps. Um, the line distance tool, which is this one on the left here, um, will lay, allow you to draw a line. Um, so if you're over here, you can hit drop a point right here. If you click that, you can just say, all right, how far is it to this point over here? And it'll show you your distance and mileage, um, the total elevation gain and the total elevation loss. And this can help you like when you're looking at different pieces as well and say like, all right, how tall is that mountain? How far is this hike, et cetera. Um, and then you hit save and it'll save on your map for future use, including offline. You can also do like an area shape tool. So if you click here, um, you can drop a point and say like, all right, how big is this area right here? And it'll give you the distance, the yards, and then um, the total acreage inside of it as well. And then if you um, want to add a waypoint anywhere as well, there's this add a waypoint button right here. And that's really great for marking things. Like if you want to see a waterfall, you want to, um, you know, make sure you take a turn at this particular place, et cetera. You can mark that right there. You can customize your waypoint with, um, with all these different icons that we have here as well. So this is a really good way to make things visual. Like if you're looking for a parking area, um, you know, rapids, uh, somewhere to, to somewhere to camp, et cetera, if you like surfing, great. Yeah, you, know, you have all these different options to choose from. And you can even customize the colors. So if you want to make that blue, red, et cetera, you can do all that right there. You can also add photos to your waypoints. I found this is really useful um, for making sure you can remember things. You can either pull them from your library or you can take a photo directly in your app like that and um, use that photo. And that'll also share with people. So um, if you want to share your route with somebody, those photos will come through. Um, Awesome. And you can also do this mark my location. This is uh, an awesome tool to use if you're like, I am standing right here and I want to mark exactly where I am. Hitting that button will just drop a waypoint wherever you are. You can move on. And then all of the content you just created goes into these folders over here. So you can look at this content all these times. You can organize them in folders, et cetera. And then here you can also share them with friends as well. You can also offline maps as well. So um, when you're traveling out of service, our app works really well um, if you remember to download a map before you go offline. So um, you just select new map and then you can choose between your different resolutions. You have your five miles wide, your 10 miles wide, um, and your 150 miles wide. Um, I personally, especially when I'm looking, especially for backcountry skiing, will often stick to five miles wide um, and make sure that I'm like encapsulating like all the area that I want to um, capture. And then once it's offline, like all the different layers, like slope angle, slope aspect, et cetera, will be functional offline. Um, so you can use it while you're making decisions in the backcountry. And then, yeah, once you hit save, you just want to make sure as well that like this thing completely downloads before you leave your Wi-Fi or your cell service. Um, so you're not left stranded in the field. And I'll also test this with this. Um, if you look right here, there's this go offline button. If you select that, it actually turns off the app's need to even try to draw from service. So it'll stop like trying to use cell service or Wi-Fi. Um, and that will allow you to like check to make sure your maps are offline and that you're getting like, you know, clear maps for when you're in the backcountry. Um, the next thing I want to show is just the activity mode selector. So this is where you can choose between trail mode, which we're currently in, and um you know, there's a handful of layers in here. I'm not going to go over much of these just because we're going into snow mode, um, which you can toggle by selecting the snowflake right here. And when you select the snowflake mode, this will, uh, will switch the app into like a winter version. And this will allow you to look at, um, you know, and toggle on backcountry ski routes, snowshoeing routes, cross-country skiing routes, as well as toggling on like avalanche forecast layers, public land, um, slope angle, slope aspect. Uh, Etc. So I'm actually going to navigate over to Level One Pass again, so I can show you. Whoops. There we go. 
And I'm also going to turn off my offline map real quick. So yeah, now you can see that a handful of um, snow specific features have pulled in here. Um, so yeah, this is the Loveland Pass area. If you're familiar with this area at all, you'll know it's probably one of the most popular backcountry skiing destinations in Colorado um, because of its ease of access and its proximity to the Front Range. Um, and we partner with Beacon Guidebooks for these. So a lot of these routes are pulled directly from those guidebooks. Um, and it gives you some great data on um, what to expect and where to go when you're traveling through these areas. So yeah, if you select one of these routes, like Summit Ridge over here, you can see, yeah, this one was submitted by Beacon Guidebooks. It's got descriptions, et cetera. It tells you like your max slope, your distance, um, and some other rich information you can use in the backcountry. Um, we also have a handful of other features. So if you go over here, um, you can see we also have like all the U.S. trail ski trail maps. So this is the ski area of Loveland. Um, so you can just for context, look at that as well. Or if you're on a ski resort and you want to know where you are, this is a great app for it. You can also see if this, uh, this little snowflake icon right here is a snow tell station. So if you select this, um, it'll tell you some stats based on current snowfall, current snow depths, the current temperature, and then you can see some historical information as well. So um, how warm has it been getting lately? Um, what's the current snow depth? Has it been melting out quickly? And here's like temperature, like has it been getting above freezing every night or every day? Um, and then what is your snow water equivalent? And then we've also partnered with CIC um, in Colorado and avalanche centers across the country to integrate some features that we think will help keep people safe in the backcountry. Um, so one of them is um, over here. You'll see we have these app, these icons over here. And what these represent is a historic avalanche fatality. Um, if you select one of these, it'll tell you a little bit more about, oh, I missed the, missed the click there. It'll tell you a little bit more about the incident that occurred. Um, and then if you click through to that full website button here, it'll give you the full report on the Avalanche Center's website. Um, and we're also integrating avalanche observations. So you'll have more real-time data like, hey, did something on Loveland Pass slide? there'll be an icon there as well. Um, and going over some of these other layers, avalanche forecast, um, if you zoom out a little bit, you can start seeing the different zones in Colorado. Um, so yeah, like if you're like, all right, where is Loveland Pass? What zone is it in? Um, this has actually become a little bit more complicated in Colorado lately since they've recently switched to um, a dynamic zone forecasting where those polygons might change based on the conditions of the day. Um, but yeah, if you're looking through here, you can see there's a handful of zones that are um, in the green, which means their average danger is a little bit lower. Um, and then when they're in the yellow, they're a little bit higher. And then it kind of goes to the different tiers, um, like orange is considerable. Um, red is, I kind of forget the coding, but yeah, the, the colors will shift based on the avalanche danger. And if you just select one of these zones, um, you can pull up the avalanche forecast as well. So you can see in this particular zone, um, the avalanche danger is moderate. Um, and then it also includes a link down here. So you can read the full report and research exactly what the avalanche problems that are affecting that area are. Um, and then, yeah, as well. So these layers work offline, um, but we have slope angle and slope aspect. So if you wanna kick on slope angle, these color coded lines will show you um, steepness based on um, you know, whether you can see the legend up here. So the green is, is pretty mellow terrain, yellow is a little bit steeper, um, and then it gets darker and darker as you go. So you can really see visually in these terrain, like this terrain where um, the steeper terrain is and you know, based on reading the avalanche report of the day, like some terrain that you might wanna stay away from. And the other section in here that we have is um, slope aspect. So if you toggle this one on, it'll show you the cardinal direction that the slope is facing. And this is really important because like, you know, north facing slopes will often hold a lot more snow, south facing sun slopes get a lot more sun. Um, and this can help you kind of determine like, you know, if you're looking at a line and you put this in conjunction with an avalanche forecast, you can determine like what place you should be riding, what will hold the best snow um, and where you should plan your tour for the day. Um, and yeah, the last thing I want to go over is in this, um, the top left corner, 
this is kind of like your home for a bunch of stuff on the administrative side. So in the my account section right here, you can change your password, you can, you know, restore your subscriptions, and you can also see like when your subscription expires. So you can anticipate your, you know, your next billing date. Um, and then you can also go into settings. There's a handful of things in here that I kind of like taking on myself. Um, so one of them, you know, you can change between imperial or metric based on your preference. Um, you can change your coordinate data. Um, and then for me, I like turning on my crosshairs, enabling pinch to rotate, and then enabling the 2D map tilt. Those are three things that I love to make sure that are um, turned on just so I can play with the map now on the go. And um, with the crosshairs too, it's like easier than pointing a lot of times to use that. Um, and then, yeah. And then if you're ever confused or have questions, we actually have a help center built in right here. So if you click this, it will pull up like almost like an FAQ section. So if you're ever like, how do I do this? Like, you know, I'm running into these errors. Like this is a really good place to start. And if that doesn't help you, um, we have a really great support team. Um, you can get in touch with them by hitting this button right here. All right. Well, awesome. I think I've made it through the fundamentals of the app, and I'd love to dive a little bit more into web map with Griffin right now. All right. Thanks so much, Matt. That was awesome. Um, cool, Matt. Can you see my screen? Yeah. Right on. Um, so yeah, this is my home range in the Tetons, and um, you know, I'll just go through how. I set up my home range, then also under this like fictitious scenario, like Matt and I are going to go out for a tour and, you know, we haven't gone out together before it's early season. We we're just, you know, trying to get a read on things and, you know, to be upfront, we're going to build this on the spot and I have an idea of where we're going, but I also like kind of made it so to cover some areas that I think are really key when you're planning a tour. So. As far as my home range, I set it up with all these wind indicators. So I have uh, all these pins dropped on different peaks around. And that's really to just emphasize that, like remind me of the wind. And because that's like the one element I always forget about. I wake up, it's sunny. I'm like, it's going to be great. And I look at the map and I'm like, oh yeah, it's blowing like 30 up there, maybe change plans. And I'm going to show you how to do that in a second. But for the sake of this tour, we're going to head into like the north part of the park and specifically, so generally when I'm East Guy, again, Matt and I haven't like been out together before. And so I'm like, all right, I want like a decent day. We're going to assume that we have the full day to get out and Matt's in good shape. He's may or may not has ever been to, have been to the Tetons before. And I kind of just want to show him around. And so this little knob up here again you know being early season and maybe having never like haven't been out this year i'm trying to find something that has a lot of different aspects um so this knob if i like kind of zoom in a little closer oh and the whole reason i like the web app is because it's just you see way more terrain it's a little bit more user friendly to when you're trying to build out a tour. And I just kind of like being able to zoom in and out and then save everything and then transfer it to the web app. Um, so just checking this area out, like this zone, I'm like, all right, what's this peak at? I'll like kind of click around and get to this summit. I'm like, all right, 9,600 feet, click down here, which kind of seems like the basin you know, 7,000, I think down here at Trapper Lake is more like 69. So got like 2,500 vert. I feel like for new touring partners, that's like a good effort. And if I like, just to highlight some of the stuff Matt was talking about, if I look at the aspects of this little area, I kind of zoom over and tilt. I mean, it has like almost everything. If you look down, I'm not sure if you can see down here, but the little aspect diagram, the only thing we're really missing is like a Southwest face. And so that gives us a lot of options for a day of touring. And so I'm like, all right, cool. This seems like a decent objective. 
go ahead, drop a pin up here at waypoint. And I, you know, I can save it into however much detail I want, but for the sake of time, I'm just gonna save it. And then after I've saved it, there's this little wind direction button that I click on. And so shows the wind as well. And now I have like that much more uh, information out there. The next thing I do, I'm gonna do, because I know like this is gonna be a whole tour, I'm gonna send Matt eventually. I'm gonna add it to a folder and we're gonna share all of this with you guys in a second as well. And new folder, save. Cool. Um, so I have that folder built, the kind of quote unquote summit up here. And then I, the next thing I'm gonna do is like really look a little bit, bit more into both the approach as far as climbing up here and the descent. So I'll switch back, turn off slope aspect and turn on slope angle. Um, and so a couple things I'm looking at here, as far as like traveling in an avalanche terrain, what I'm really focused on, sure if I can move this so you guys can see it. Um, so this, the prime like slope angle for avalanche terrain is this like red area, like 35 to 40 degrees. So I'm trying to avoid, at least for the up track and possibly the down track, depending on avalanche conditions, crossing into that sort of terrain. And this rib, I think, as far as like an ascent skin track is looking pretty good to me as far as you're in the yellow, this orange, not meaning it's completely safe, but I like it more than like, you know, going up one of these gullies where you're getting a lot of red and like purple areas. And also on the descent, it's like, all right, we got a lot of different options and it kind of depends like how the avalanche conditions dictate, but like having that variety is, you know, so key to any like successful day, having a plan B, C, D sometimes it all helps. Um, and so by, you know, looking at this entire area and trying to figure out like different routes, I feel like pretty confident that there's going to be something that's going to be good to ski. Um, and just like on a quick note, I was reading through everything, all the questions that were submitted as far as like avalanche start zones. I feel like if you zoom over here, like if you're looking for really questionable terrain or a good display of really questionable terrain, it's like these purple to red zones. And then combined with, you can kind of tell it goes into a gully right here. Like I'm pretty much gonna avoid that unless I'm really confident in this snow conditions. And the other feature I think is like kind of helpful to identify is, you know, we classically think of these avalanche start zones as like that, these big slopes, but these terrain traps that will go from even like down here, this like purple section or where it goes from like purple to orange or purple to yellow in here. Like, you know, I'm not saying this is like a terrain trap for sure, but it's just like another tool in the kit to like be like, okay, maybe that area I need to like be heads up around. And especially when you're planning your route up, it's just this whole slope angle thing isn't meant to be, make you completely confident in where you're going. Be like, yeah, that's avalanches can't happen there. It's another tool in the kit to make predictions and try to figure out what the safest, safest route up and down is. Um, cool. So. Now that I've like looked at the slope angle, I'm gonna go into a little bit more detail of like where we might actually ski. Um, and a couple like notes here, as far as just reading the satellite terrain, like this sort of spacing and trees where there's like, there's trees, but there's also snow in between. You can see everything like, I don't know for sure, but I, I can guess that's probably gonna be pretty good skiing. It's when you get into this really, I'm trying to find a section of forests that are a little bit thick. 
darker, like this section down here, where you're not seeing the canopy as well. Or you're seeing only the canopy, I should say, and you can still see the ground, like, or you can't see the ground at all, like that level of thickness, you're definitely not. I mean, it could be decent skiing on the right year, the right day, but as far as e scanning goes, I'm looking for these treat areas that are like have some snow in between them that I can see. Um, and so, you know, for a day, like let's say it's tomorrow and there's it's low snow and never gone out with Matt before, I might just, you know, pencil on a few routes as far as like where we might be able to ski down. Again, we're assuming we're going to come up here. So I like generally e-scouting. I'm pretty like, I'm precise when I need to be. And then when I don't need to be, I'm more of like, all right, this is like, the general idea of where we might go. Um, and this is probably gonna turn out to be pretty close to down the skin track, which isn't like the worst idea, you know, given the conditions or given like the day. And so we'll just write that like there, be like, all right, that could be one option if like South is skiing well. Go ahead and save that. Add it to my folder. Onyx demo. We got one route, and then maybe like north trees are going to ski a little bit better. So I might throw in another quick route here. Let's go kind of north to south, maybe. And for time's sake, I'm kind of moving through this quickly, but the general idea is like I'm putting together a couple different route options and hopefully avoiding might you just need to move a line so we're not into going into that gully as much. Um, I'm just giving a Matt, Matt a general idea of like where we might go and this ends out. And if I had the time, I would go into a bit more detail about like some different routes down like the south base, this like north kind of really fun looking terrain would also be an option. Um, but I'll just stick to a couple different options for the sake of time here. Again, add it to the folder. And cool. And then also importantly, I'm gonna go in and like, look at what kind of approach that we're gonna take. And I'm not sure what the best way, again, I kind of like bounce all around when I'm doing this. Like, I don't think there's a ideal way to do it. So, on the approach, I'll say we're gonna park, we're gonna assume this road is open, which is, it's actually not right now, but for the sake of like this demonstration, I think it's good to note like what parking area might be the most ideal. And so essentially we have this parking area down here and then this string lake trailhead around here. Um, and I might just do a quick line and to see like which is closer, and again, this is like one of the areas where I want to be, I'm not worried about like that much precision. I'm trying to get a general idea of like the distance and I'm not going to click to every little like turn that I might take. So 3.1 miles, cool. Just going to discard that. And then I'm going to go in from the string or like trailhead. Whoops. String Lake Trailhead. Go along Lee Lake. 
And I think it's important to note here, like this is a summer trail here, but especially early season, like summer trails are amazing, like shortcuts. And like, it's something, you know, that's going to be pretty easy going the whole time. And there's also like, you know, you're on this kind of tunnel of trees and you know, like there's something to be said for like not having to think about like looking at where you're going all the time. It's just like, okay, go on this trail, turn the, well, just cruise for a second. So we have 3.5 miles there, which is, okay, it's half a mile longer, 0.4, but you might think like that other trailhead is the way to go, but I always like to zoom in on the approach because I think it's the, the most, like epicking right out of the car is just so brutal. And some of these approaches you do in the dark. And so like, don't think that like the objective is all you're looking at. Like take the time to really figure out your approach because sometimes like zooming in super tight here and seeing all this down timber, like when it's first thing, like early season, like that is going to be absolutely miserable to go through. Like it's going to be kind of miles of it. And Matt's coming in from out of town and, to be like dude what did you get me into this is awful and so in this case i think even though it's a little bit longer like that half mile of easy travel is totally worth it um and so i'm like okay cool trail string like trailhead drop a pin add it to my folder i got going And cool. So I have an objective, some possible routes. And then the final thing I'm gonna do as far as the approach goes, just again, like epicing first thing in the morning is like a pretty bad way to start your day. I'm gonna figure out how, well, to get to a point that I think it's gonna be very straightforward to, as to like where where we're going and that would be like in this clearing here and this terrain is it looks i don't know it's very easy just to write it off and be like i can cruise through here like bam 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 but if it's dark or if you're in the forest and you can't see anything where you're going like you're going to thank yourself later for like dialing in this approach and my rule of thumb so this like these trees in here how tightly they're spaced like I'm going to guess that's like new growth forest, which is like really tough to get through. Whereas this stuff, so I always compare like this looks like asparagus and this looks like big broccoli heads. <laughs> it's like, this is the old growth and that's going to be like bigger canopies and like easier to route find through. So I'm trying to avoid this stuff and like kind of stick to this old growth. Um, and so I got a pretty like obvious like corn in the trail here. So I might just be a little bit more precise. Let's see. Sorry, Matt, this part might be tough for the first little bit, but you're gonna do great. I'll I'm a just flipboarder, kinda... remember? Yeah. You, you love it, right? Um, just kind of zoom out. All right, where am I going? Cool. I'm working along here. And like this gully seems like a pretty reasonable approach. I'm not going to get like where we're going to do every kick turn, but try to basically like have that dialed. I'm gonna choose a different color because it's the approach. Add to my folder. Cool. And then again, like people, like you could do like every kick turn up here, but I think that's unnecessary, unnecessary and 
the way I kind of look at these elevation gains, or sorry, when I'm, I'm not as concerned about distance to determine like how much time a tour is going to take. I, I'm concerned about elevation gains. So we figure this is 2,500 feet. If I'm moving pretty well, I would say a thousand vertical feet an hour is like a pretty conservative estimate. Sometimes if we break a trail, it's going to be less than that, sometimes more. But I'm going to estimate that this is going to be about two and a half hours up. Um, and I'm going to, again, just tell Matt, like, this is going to be our up track. And I'll like stick to the ridge, but I won't go into like crazy detail. Again, be precise where you need to be and like get a rough estimate in other cases. Um, okay, cool. So got a couple line options. Feel like I've done my research, got my parking spot. And yeah, I'm ready to send this to Matt basically. So go into my content, Onyx demo. And Matt, did I miss anything? I'm trying to think. I think it looks like you have everything. I see the waypoints there and the lines. Um, I think that's, that's a pretty comprehensive tour plan. Cool. Um, yeah, just a couple of things while I'm like, it's on my mind. As far as like that, you know, the amount of time you're estimating, like that pr approach is significant. It's like three and a half miles. I don't know if I necessarily do that for uh, that specific tour, but I do think it gives you like a good example of some different features. And for that flatland travel, when you know you're going to tour on the way there and way back, my rule of thumb is about two to three miles an hour. So I'm going to add like, to be conservative, two miles there. So four and a half hours at the top. And that's not like some sort of race I'm sending against myself. It's more like, okay, if it takes me five hours to get to here, like maybe I'm changing out my plan. Um, cool. So I'm gonna drop this in the chat and you guys can all see this. That's the tour we just created. And, yeah, I can and the, other, the other thing I like about this or like texting somebody your uh, plan is that it has accountability. It's not like you're the, the map guy and like, you know where we're going. It's like, hey, here's the plan, download the maps. Like we're all in this together. Yeah, and I think it's it's pretty critical in this day and age. Like that's one of the things that I think is awesome about Onyx. It's just like making sure that, you know, even if you know you're you're along to the ride and you're not quite sure of, you know, I've never been I've never been backcountry skiing in the Tetons before. Um, making sure that everybody is has the plan. And then it also helps a little bit with like, you know, when you're leading somebody on a tour and they're like, how much further? I'm tired. Yeah, you can see that in real time. Uh, like you, you sandbagged me. Like we're only yeah. a quarter of the way there. You brought me on this jungle gym approach through all that down timber. No. Yeah. Um, so awesome. I just took that link that Griffin um, has sent to me, um, and then this is what you can experience right here. Is um, it will say this is the name of this folder, the Onyx demo. Griffin posts shared a folder with you. Would you like to add to your content? If you hit the add folder, um, it'll give you this disclaimer. It's view only. So. It's kind of interesting the way we have it built. Um, Griffin owns this folder and this content. So um, like any edits that you make are only reflected on your end. Um, you're not gonna mess with his lines uh, if he sends you some beta. Um, and then it's also awesome because um, if he decides to revoke that access to the beta, he can actually do that within his waypoint tool. Um, so yeah, look how easy that was. Um, we have all of the stuff we just built right here. Um, so we can see everything we just talked about all in one place. And you know, as we prepare for the tour, um, this is this is all ready to go. And another benefit is Griffin just spent all of his time building this map on his web map. He doesn't even need to do anything. Um, your Onyx account is linked across devices, so um, all of the stuff that he just built on his desktop, um, you know, if you're in service, it'll connect with your Onyx account, basically go up to the cloud, and then come back down. It'll be on his phone, so he doesn't need to move around GPX files to get everything on his phone, um, and he's all set. And then it was easy as that just to share this beta with me so I can get plans going.
Um, so one of the things too, um, Griffin, we've agreed to meet at the early hours of the morning in this parking lot here at this waypoint. So if you select this, um, if you go down to the bottom, I'll highlight it here with my mouse, so you can all see it. There's this navigate to button. If you select that, it'll actually open up Google Maps or Apple Maps. So that's a really easy way for him to be like, all right, we're going to this parking lot and I can just open one of my driving apps and have turn by turn directions directly to the trailhead, as well as like how far, how long it's going to take me there to get there. So I can make sure that I'm not late, that I'm not driving around in circles when I'm out of service looking for where Griffin has parked, et cetera. And that's that's one of the critical steps of starting a tour is making sure you're there on time and you know you have everything you need. Um, so yeah, now that we're here, um, you know, again, make sure you download your offline maps when you're out of service. Hit this offline map button. Make sure that the area that we're touring in is covered. Um, this particular one is covered in the five mile radius and hit save. And then once you have this all downloaded, uh, we are ready to do our mission. All right, so that's our walkthrough of the just basic how to use the app to plan a tour. Um, I hope this is a little bit valuable. Um, and I think that it's really awesome just kind of showcasing the features between the cell phone, the web map, sharing, all that other stuff to make sure that you and your crew are all on the same page. Um, now we get to some fun stuff. Um, we have a giveaway tonight. Um, we are giving away 25 Onyx Backcountry hats and a Kessley swag bag um, from Griffin himself, thanks to them. Um, so yeah, if you'd like to enter, um, you can either visit this link bit.ly um, right there. You can scan this QR code or they'll be placing this link in the chat as well. Um, so enter, um, I'll keep this going for a couple additional seconds to make sure that you can all enter and win, get a chance to win the swag here. All right, and just a reminder, um, if you haven't, if you weren't sold earlier and you're sold now and you'd like to sign up for your 30% off discount to Onyx Backcountry, um, here's that QR code again. Um, so if you wanna scan that and start your, um, Start your 30% off discount. You can do that here as well. Yeah, and if you have a minute just to talk a little bit about some of the questions that came up beforehand about, um, you know, being in airplane mode and where to keep your phone to keep it warm or your battery from dying, like I'll switch to airplane mode because I find, especially in backcountry terrain where you're like going in and out of service, it's that your phone's searching for service that really drains the battery. And so if you go into airplane mode, like that really helps give you a buffer from, you know, taking your phone out and basically being dead. Um, and so that's like one of the most important things as well as from a safety standpoint that keeping your phone that 20 centimeters from your avalanche transceiver and just always having that distance. Personally, I keep my tr transceiver in my thigh pocket on my um, pants and then my phone in my breast pocket on my shirt. But everybody's different. And again, this is all covered in a avalanche course. Absolutely. Um, if you have any questions leading out of this webinar, um, throw them in the Q&A. Um, and I have a couple other ones to kind of run from right now. So we had a question about waypoints. Um, are they public if you don't share them? Um, no. So your waypoints will be private um, and they're kind of your information. So um, you will never expect to see your waypoints pop up on other people's maps unless you're sharing them like Griffin did with me. Um, and then you also kind of have a little bit of control in there um, as you can you can remove access to certain waypoints and stuff like that if you'd like to kind of control who gets to see your personalized map data. Um, so that's definitely something that like we think is is kind of key to Onyx is just making your maps your own and, and kind of having control over your beta um, and not just kind of blasting it out. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go into the Q&A a little bit. Yeah, did you talk about uh, public and private lands at all as far as? Oh yeah, that was one that I missed. Um, so yeah, in Onyx Backcountry, um, can you see my map right now? Or is it still on the uh, uh, no, I slide? Can, I, can, I can see the map. Cool, awesome. I'll just show you this here. Um, so Onyx Maps, um, you know, it started as a hunting company. Um, so helping hunters differentiate between private and public land is something that, um, is definitely core to who we are. So if you are in this section right here, um, especially in trail mode, I think actually it's always toggled on a web map. 
you can actually see like over in this area right here, some different color shading that will help you differentiate between public and private land. So, um, you know, this green area over here, if you're ever curious too of like, if a piece of land you're looking at is public or private, you can just tap it. And this goes for both um, mobile and desktop. Uh, and this will tell you what kind of land it is. So this is government land. This is White River National Forest land. Um, and it gives you like an example of what that boundary actually is. So this is a really, really helpful way to like make sure that you're staying on public land and you kind of know where you stand. Um, and then you can see there's different color shadings like this parcel over here is BLM land. And I think there's some other, I think this is some private land over here. If you're ever not sure too, like if you click it and you don't see any of that thing that says this is government land, then that is generally private land in the Onyx Backcountry app. Um, I also got a question about um, yeah, import and export functions. So yeah, those those can be done um, not only through the link that you have um, that Griffin just sent me. You can also import and export GPX files really really well through the app as well. Let's just see. I think the contents that Griffin sent me should be over here. Maybe I just need to refresh. So yeah, like let's say I have, um, like if I'm creating a folder as well, like well, I'm just going to drop a couple waypoints just to show. Um, let's just do this one and I'll do a line as well. Oops. I'll draw a line just, just to show that we can kind of share a handful of things here. If you save these, um, you can actually share, if you go to my content, um, we can do select. This is kind of a life hack. Um, if you select this thing that says list only content visible on screen, it'll actually just pull in what you can phys physically see. And this kind of makes things easier. Like you saw as Griffin was putting things into folders as he was building them in our webinar. Um, I can actually do that right here. Oh, I have to select them. So yeah, I'm selecting both these. I'm going to add them to a folder just like this. We'll call it test. And then, um, yeah, if you're in a shared a folder like this, you can share it um, if you select this over here. Um, actually, sorry, one second. I should have been back on that other screen. So one more time, you do select. You select both these waypoints. And then if you do the share button right here, this will show the share link that Griffin sent me earlier that made things really easy to just text between us as both Onyx users. But if you're using, um, if you're touring with a friend who has say CalTopo or Gaia or um, some other GPS app, we really want to make sure that all of the beta is super easy to transfer between whatever app people choose to use, um, as well as like, you know, if you're trying to pull data from elsewhere. Um, if you hit this export button right here, it'll give you some options. Um, you can import or export GPX or KML files, and then this will save them to your computer or to your mobile phone. Um, there's also a mobile import export as well. And if you're interested in importing these files as well, you go to this My Content section, and then up here you'll see this Import section, and then you can basically drag any KML or GPX file that you find. Um, you know, maybe there's some forum of some line that somebody did on the internet you want to pull it in, or um, if you use something like Strava to document your backcountry tours in the past, and you want to bring them all into the Onyx app. Um, that's another good way to do that using those GPX files. Awesome. I've got a question about what little mountain in Pennsylvania I came from. Uh, a little one called <laughs> Ski Round Top. <laughs> Great little hill, 600 feet of fun. Um, I found this on the web. And Siri thought that was funny too. Um, cool. Is there any last minute questions? I think, I feel like I've answered a lot. And I know that the team that has been working answering questions in the chat has been working overtime. So, much thanks to those guys working on the back end as well. We could not do this without them. Um, but we have time for a couple more. Do you have any questions? Uh, what countries? Can you speak to the? Uh... Yeah, so right now um, we're predominantly a US based app. So, um, you know, right now we're only in the US App Store, um, but we're starting to try to extend some information, especially for backcountry skiing, into Canada. Um, so if you're a fan of the 50 project, um, we have been integrating lines for them as well. So like we just do, what was the one that went live today? The Uber tour. 
you can see this was on Rogers Pass, Rogers Pass in British Columbia. And yeah, if you're a fan of the 50, this is a really cool place to look to because um, we've worked with Cody to integrate all of his lines into the app as well. And he actually writes little notes um, about access. So kind of like a guidebook type description that you'd expect, elevation profiles, um, descriptions, et cetera. So um, right now we're not fully rolled out into Canada, um, but a lot of the layers and functions actually still work there. So if you're trying to plan a tour and you're on a trip in Canada, you can still use things like slope angle, slope aspect. Um, I don't believe we have Canadian avalanche centers into the app yet, um, but but yeah, you can you can loosely use it. And we have like satellite imagery for most of the world as well, um, but the features kind of can change based on where you're at. So yeah. All right, any other last minute questions? I see a question uh, from Justin here about specific tools for snowmobiling. Um, the preferred app actually for snowmobiling is the Onyx Offroad app. Um, it is more dedicated for um, the mechanized travel user. We still have some snowmobile tracks in here as well, as well as like access roads um, in, in the, uh, the wintertime, if you're kind of like me and you'll utilize the snowmobile to, um, to give you access to go splitboarding. Um, but the off-roading app is going to start integrating a lot more of um, like trail descriptions for snowmobile trails and snowmobile areas. So um, it's it's kind of a better aligned app for that use case if that is your primary mode of transportation in the backcountry. All right. Um, and with that, I think we are um, about ready to wrap this up. I want to thank everybody for joining us. Um, hopefully your winners are, um, you know, fun, exciting, safe, lots of snow. Um, follow us on our social media. We have all of the channels, um, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, where this video will be uploaded after the presentation, if you'd like to come back to it, um, et cetera. So we'll be continuing to make some of these um, moving forward and we look forward to the next one. Um, Griffin, thank you so much for joining us. Um, it was so awesome hearing about your discovery as well as getting a look into your mind of how you plan backcountry tours. So thank you so much for joining us tonight. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to our, our day tomorrow um, around in the Tetons. Yeah, I, I wish we were really going there, <laughs> but we'll have to link up sometime for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Cool. All right, everybody, thank you for your time. Uh, download the app if you haven't yet and uh, you know have a great winter. Cheers, guys. Yeah.